Jeep beautification and an awesome way to secure the pins in shackles. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you today? Pretty good here, and that's right. It is Jeep Beautification Day, not what you might be thinking. And I have a pretty cool way to secure the pins. You know, those little pins that go into shackles or D-rings? I'm going to show you how to do that. Appreciate my uh, buddy Randall bringing these over. Gave me a pair of them, so I'm going to show you. This can be used on any vehicle that has D-rings or shackles. I'm going to demonstrate it or put them on for you on the uh, Tacoma back there, actually. But before we get to that... Um, my wife has been wanting a little uh, change to her Jeep Wrangler back here. And what it is, at first, she had wanted to change the Jeep word right there to black, like what I have on the Gladiator here. Because you see, she's not a big fan of chrome either, right? And hers is chrome. I mean, look at that. It's like a beaming Jeep beacon right there. So she decided yesterday actually, that instead of changing them to black, which we haven't been able to find strangely, now I suppose I could have bought a set of the same kind that go on the Gladiator and just replaced them, but was really hoping for overlays or something. But anyway, it kind of dawned on her that, gee, she could just take those off. I think I might have suggested that about 300 years ago. But anyway, she came to the conclusion that they should be removed. Now, I'm hoping and I believe that these are not penned. We're going to find out because I'm going to pull them off the letters and uh, give it a nice smooth look. It'll give her more room to put stuff like these decals and things that she has. She likes to put things on her Jeep. By the way, these are all static or magnetic. They're not stuck on the side of the Jeep. So if you're thinking that, she's taking care of it. Anyway, let me get you set up. We'll go ahead and pull these off first. And then I will show you what this is for. And no, it's not an earring. Okay, here we go. To do this, again, it's pretty simple. All you need is a hairdryer and something to fit behind these letters. I know a lot of people out there use fishing line. I never had great luck with that. It either cut into my hand as I was trying to rip through the adhesive or it broke. People have even mentioned using dental floss. There's no way that stuff is strong enough to do this, at least not in my experience. So, of course, I heat it up first with a hairdryer. I'm going to use an old handkerchief uh, because it seems to be strong enough. It will tear eventually or rip, but it's thin enough on the edges that you can get it behind the letters and pull them off. I like that. It works really well. Uh, best way to do this, of course, is to have it out in the sun uh, because that heats it up the best and makes it the easiest to take off. But... We don't have any sun today and it's rather cool here. So we're gonna use a hairdryer. Okay, got them all heated up. Pretty darn hot to the touch actually. Now, I'm just gonna to try to start in a corner and cut through the adhesive. It'd be nice if I could just get under there and rip them off, but it never works out that way. So let's find a good edge on this thing. about right there, I think. All right. And it is cutting right through the handkerchief, but that's okay, because that means I can use the stronger edge to get behind it. Kind of like thread almost, right? It's working pretty well, actually. So it keeps on, and there we broke all the way. So now I should be able to kind of pull it off of there, I think, hopefully. There you go. There's the J. Did leave a heck of a lot of adhesive on there. That's kind of a drag. That means more work for me. See if I can catch an edge, which I can. And maybe just kind of work it with my thumb. I'm trying to keep my thumbnail off of the paint, of course. Hopefully there's no paint damage under here. It can happen. And I have heard uh, of people pulling these off and then having damaged paint underneath. Uh, I'm really hoping that's not the case uh, here, but <laughs> it is a risk. So 
if you're going to do this, and I am going to have, it looks like, quite a bit of adhesive left on the back, so I'll be using uh, Goo Gone to get that off. But I'm going to go ahead and work on the rest of these, get them off, and then we'll come back on and show you what it looks like before taking the adhesive off. Okay, got the letters off. They're all in a pile here. Here's some adhesive. And there's what I'm left with. You guys can see there's quite the shadow on there. This is all adhesive. Um, you know, these letters had been on this Jeep for about two years. I think coming up on three years. So it's no wonder uh, that you would think they would be difficult to get off, right? And they were. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and soak the remnants here in Goo Gone. And hopefully there's no finish damage like fading or anything like that. Um, around the letters that would make them stand out. It's hard to tell. We'll see when it's all done. But what I use for this is Goo Gone, this stuff right here. You just kind of liberally put it on there and then leave it sit. Let it do the work. I am finally done with removing those two Jeep badges from the side of Krista's Jeep. I got to say, it is the worst experience, bar none, that I have ever had removing badges from vehicles you know i mentioned earlier these have been on here for probably about three years coming up on three years and i gotta say man the adhesive that jeep used after time is very very difficult to get off uh it took me about like i say two hours to do this this is where they were um it came out really well i mean the paint is in really good shape. You can see there's no shadowing, ghosting, anything like that from where it was. But man, was that difficult. I actually used a combination of uh, Goo Gone and rubbing alcohol to get it off. I got it down to where there was just the thinnest, like skim coat of adhesive left. And the alcohol fortunately took care of that because otherwise, I don't know how I'd have gotten it off. Here's the other side. You guys can see, again, it's all waxed up. I did put a little coat of wax on it because obviously I stripped everything that was there off. I mean, you can see me in here, right? It looks awesome. Came out really, really well. But uh, what a pain. Now, let's get on to the second part of this video, and that is securing the shackle pins, which is going to be a heck of a lot easier and a heck of a lot shorter. Hey, let me show you again what I've got here. They're just little metal rings. This is wire, I guess, with little screw-in connectors on the ends. You can see there, this end is threaded, this end goes over it, and you screw it together like so. And it's going to keep the pin from flying off of the shackle, should that ever happen. So, let's go down below, put them on. All right, we're sitting on the floor down here, and what this is supposed to do you can see the shackle right here, right? And on this edge, there's a pin, I guess. It's threaded, it screws in, and it has a hole in it. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna put that wire around so that it secures the pin from coming out, unthreading, out of the other side of the pin. And the idea is, is that it doesn't allow enough room for that pin to come all the way out and then everything come flying off. That's the idea. So let's go ahead and get it on there. This is a very simple procedure. And I do like that it's black, by the way, as opposed to uh, silver or chrome. And I imagine you'll probably not even be able to tell it's on there once it's placed. So let's see, best way to do this, I guess, trying to make it easy on myself, uh, is just to thread it through and then go ahead and uh, screw on the end. So let's do that, we're threaded through and then should be able to, ideally, just thread it on here, like so. So just thread it till, or screw it on till it's tight, obviously. Doesn't take much, and I'm not really worried about this coming undone. There's no pressure on it. It's pretty small and light, so it's not gonna come unthreaded itself, I'm sure. But there you go. That's what it looks like. A very simple little device. Uh, right here, and again, it's just to keep the pen from backing out. This isn't big enough to allow it to move very far if it did start to move, so the pen can't come out. I'll go over to the other side, and we'll show them to you when I'm done. Okay, there you have it. Pretty simple, again, little device. Not much to this. 
but sturdy enough that it's not going to break or come off. Uh, I get some movement on this shackle. On the other one, I don't. So it is gonna move around, but it's not restricting anything because it's between the pin and the shackle itself. So we don't aren't gonna have any wear there. One more quick look over here at the other one. There you go. That's it. Just a simple little device to keep everything copacetic. Okay, there you go. And that little shackle securement, securement, securing device could be used on anything, of course. I happen to have shackles on the Tacoma, so you could use them on your Jeep too if you have shackles in the front or even on the rear. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about those. I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, if you're interested, I do have two other channels. The first is Rob Motive, all about my 2020 Toyota Tacoma. And the second is Rob Motive Civic, all about my experiences with the Honda Civic Type R and the Honda Civic Sport Hatch. Check them out, and if you like them, why not go ahead and subscribe? Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.